Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part three of my Star Wars bipedal working gonk droid. It's quite important to check out parts one and two to have a look at the concept for this and some of the mechanisms I looked at last time, including this interesting looking thing. But basically, I'm taking some of my previous projects that didn't work too badly and combining all the best features of them, along with a modern microcontroller and a modern inertial measurement unit to make a dynamically stable bipedal robot. And it's going to be shaped like a Star Wars GNK or Gonk or Power Droid, which is essentially a box that walks along with legs on. So I've done a bit more design. I'm not going to do too much of a recap on how it works, but check out the previous parts as I say. But let's have a look at that CAD. All right, so here's my rough CAD for the sort of middle part of one leg. So as I mentioned last time, we have sort of a double jointed knee here with these parallelograms um, top and bottom. Don't forget to check out parts one and two to find out more about this. The motors in here, I haven't got the mounts yet, but basically I've left lots of holes to mount them and the gear on the other side, which that motor runs against. Now, I've tried to make these parts as repeatable and as generic as possible, so the fronts and the backs of the legs are in fact um, the same part, um, and so are the tops and bottoms. So we're going to print all these out lots of times, and then attached to them will either be these attached back to back to make the double jointed knee, I may reprint the tops and bottoms to make the hip and, a hip and ankle, or I may leave them and just screw the extra hinge joints, which of course go the other way, um, onto those. Now, um, considering the bearings for this, I was going to put metal bearings in. I'm going to have um, some 4mm stainless steel bar going through, but actually in this assembly here there's 16 joints. Um, if you take into account there's one on each end of each shaft, um, and then I would end up with 32 bearings for both legs, and that's only for those joints. If we do all of the joints the other way as well, and all the hip joints, we end up with nearly 50 bearings. Now, metal bearings weigh quite a bit, and also they cost money, so what I've decided to do, in fact, is put these little bushings in. I mean, these things aren't going to go around at thousands of RPM, they're just going to turn backwards and forwards probably a, cu a couple of RPM, maybe one RPM. So I'm just going to 3D print a nylon bushing that pops in there. We'll look at that in a moment. There's an end stop right in the end of the shaft there, so that should be sufficient for running the stainless steel bars on. So we need to get those sizings right, but I think that should be perfectly okay. Um, so once we've got at least half of this assembled, so we're going to just do the top half today, then we can start mounting the motor and getting that opposite gear the right size so it meshes properly. We also need a feedback pot, which is going to go across one corner, and we'll design that in once we've got this together. So let's print out some of these parts and see what they look like. So I've arranged some of them here. Basically, we're just going to print these things twice each. And of course, they're the same parts that make up that whole assembly. Now, I'm going to be doing these in quite a dense infill. It's 30% uh, with six perimeters in a 0.3mm layer height with a half mil nozzle. So uh, all of these parts fit on the Lolzbot TAS bed. And with all those perimeters, we can see those holes should be pretty tough and all of the joints should be pretty tough. So we're going to make some quite substantial bits of plastic. Here are the parts, they've come out pretty substantially. They're some of the heaviest parts I've made for a while, although they're only 30% in infill, so they're not that heavy. Um, and they're only plastic, so um, what I wanted to isolate was twists like this. If I hold that, you can see there's not much twist in it, which is what I want really. And obviously two of those back to back, we should make quite a rigid structure. So of course these go together to make the box section there, and you'll notice I trimmed all the internal facing corners off so these things can fold at quite an angle before they touch, which is good, so it'll be able to pick its knees up, although it doesn't actually need to that much for walking. So um, of course the motor we need to mount in one side there with its gear, and that's represented by this little mechanism I made last time, which rolls around the bigger gear which is on the other side. Before I can do that I need to make the bushings that go in here, put some stainless in and check how much that can move 
and I'm going to print that, in fact, in Tormon Alloy, uh, which is a sort of nylon type of material that's incredibly tough and should be fine for this. You could also look at Tormund Bridge, which is um, easy to print, and another nylon material. Both, in fact, are easier to print than just nylon. So it's going to be a bit of trial and error to get the sizings correct to push in these and to fit the stainless steel. But nonetheless, it should be a fairly easy task. Here it comes. I'm printing this on the Lulzbot Mini and the Lulzbot edition of Cura for slicing actually has a setting for Tallman Alloy, so that's fairly easy to uh, get the settings right. The only thing is getting it to stick to the bed. Most nylons don't like to stick, so the recommendation is to put some Elmer's all-purpose glue on there. Just a little patch in the middle and you can wash it off with water afterwards and hopefully that should help the part stick. So. This is the first one. I shaved about 0.2 mil off the outside and hopefully it'll push fit into my other parts. Um, and we'll see how that turns out shortly. The first one I did there was weirdly squashed against the bed and it didn't come out very well. The top was okay and that enabled me to measure it against the bit of stainless steel and it was far too big. So I've tweaked the settings a bit and now I'm printing a few of these and we'll see how those turn out. They're looking much better though. Here are the ones that worked out well, so I've made them slightly too tall and what I've been doing is just shoving them in the hole and cutting the excess off and that leaves me with a nice bushing in there which fits really snugly and hopefully is just the right size for this to turn fairly freely in there so I can make a nice hinge. Um, there's a couple of mil gap between the grey and the black parts. So we've got some nylon washers just to put in there and we can keep that nice and tight. Right, there it is all together. So it looks pretty substantial. It can bend enough to lift the leg. Doesn't really need to bend much to walk. And obviously we need to get that half gear in and the motor on the other side anyway, so that will do fine. And I've got some more of those being printed there to assemble the other legs. So obviously we need to make four of these in total. The next part of this, as I say, is to put that gear in and to put the motor in. So I've made a little motor mount there that holds my motor. And then we've got the gear here. Now, um, I've actually decided to make the gears rather than draw them in another application and import them. So for now, I've just plotted the radius I need. So I've made um, a radius that almost touches that gear. And the center of the radius, if you remember from last time, is basically the same as the radius of this whole thing at the bottom. So this is 100 mil from the two joints there. And what we find is, of course, that the centre of this radius needs to be 100 mil away from the centre of the gear there. So I've drawn a radius there based on that that almost touches that gear, and then we just need to put teeth on it. So, as I say, I decided to make the gear manually, and I've done this quite a few times before. So what I actually did was got one of these gears and cut the teeth off, and then used the circular pattern tool to plot them all around, deleted the ones I don't need, and... Uh, there it is, I've merged those in. I've got 54 teeth in this circle, and if I find the pitch is wrong, I can add a 55th, or I can take one away, and that's pretty much all the fine tuning I can do. Um, I think that looks just about right though, and obviously we can test it and do it by trial and error, but I think that should be okay. Right, here are the printed gears, so let's see how that runs. Well, it seems to run okay, which is quite good. This gear fits inside, I've left some holes here, I've also made some brackets, but basically I will put some short bits of metal in there and they will go in there, so I'll basically have a plug that holds it from slipping, then some L-shaped brackets that hold it on, but for now we can just position it in there. It goes roughly there, so we can see that that should stay hopefully true with the motor spindle. We're not really going to know how well it runs till I put it all together and have it perfectly centrally held there. I made one change from the CAD with these motor brackets. I did have these L-shaped ones, but the gear hits them because it's quite close to this plate. So that was the only change I had to make. So I'm going to assemble that and see how it runs. My large gear is installed. I had to actually make a slightly smaller one. This is the original one, but I found it was too tight. So I've just reduced the radius down by one millimeter and put the teeth back on. I've again used 54 teeth. They're slightly closer together now, marginally, and in fact it seems to run okay, so that may have been a good thing. The only slight issue is it now rubs on this plate on the back. So I'm just printing a thinner one, so basically taking a millimetre off this surface, and uh, basically I've made these brackets slightly longer to compensate. But if we put the gear on, 
it fits pretty well and it's loose on the motor at the moment but we can see as we move this it's aligned all the way up just attach some wires to the motor i've got an 11.1 volt lipo here so let's just power that motor seems to work pretty well obviously i've done the gear up on the drive shaft now so it moves pretty quick should be fast enough obviously that's full lock but we only need to move a little bit to lift the feet for walking that seems to be okay probably on each step we need to do something like this so it's pretty uh pretty agile i think and we're going to test the power that we've got in there as well but i'm pretty happy with the speed that that moves i just clamped this to the edge of the bench so obviously it'll be mounted up this way and they'll be stacked on top of each other to make the two halves of the leg so obviously it will move in this sort of fashion so now if i'm lucky i can try and uh, hold this and power it up at the same time yeah it's pretty talky i think that's going to be fine Obviously it doesn't really need to do much and when the leg bends and pushes the robot up um, at the most it's probably going to be slightly bent like this and then it will push sort of the load upwards as this gets straighter so there's more than enough torque in these motors to move this around. I've assembled four of these units now and these parts are stuck together with a solvent weld of acetone because they're printed in ABS and I've also put some metal pins in which are the same pins that hold the big gear in so that's fixed together pretty well. The other one I haven't put the motors in yet mainly because I've run out of countersunk screws the right length so I've got some of those on the way but this of course we can move around freely now so we can see how the leg would bend or how it would step forward and so on and we only need to move these a very small amount so if we move one a tiny amount there and that one the other way we can see that we've already got quite a big um, amount of reach here and if we had the other leg doing the same thing the other way we'd already have a step length just for that small amount of movement which is the same distance as this so um, i think that they're going to move quick enough with enough power for walking along this is the kind of spacing I'm going to have uh, between them, so looking from the front. And of course we've got quite a lot of lift there, more than enough to face the leg forward to take a step without scraping the foot on the ground. And we could also crouch down if we wanted. So these come in at about 45 centimetres tall. So once we've got the feet on and those joints and the mechanisms there, the hips and the box on top, we're going to end up with something that's about three foot tall hopefully, so we're hitting the target size. Comparing to Android 12, we can see the leg is pretty much the same height there. So we're going to end up with something that's about as tall as this, as I say, once the hips and ankles are on. And uh, this robot is, yeah, exactly one metre tall right to the uh, top there, which is just out of shot. So obviously it's got the gunk droid box on it. So it's going to pretty much be that size, which is about three feet tall, which is just right. So I spent quite a long time printing all these parts out. Some of these were four hours each. So there's quite a lot of printing there, so I've run out of time to actually design any more of this episode. But next time I will be designing the hips and the ankles, hopefully, and getting as much of those printed as I can and assembled. And of course there's another motor on each hip and ankle joint. After that we can work out the frame that goes on the top that holds batteries and things, and then we can do some electronics, so it's coming on pretty well. Don't forget to support me on Patreon if you'd like to. All of my projects are funded by superfans. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos a few days early, and also an exclusive live broadcast with me, where you can interact with the chat, which I do on a regular basis. All right, that's all for now.